All right, this is going to be the final episode for the session, and I feel the need to actually check the album since it's been quite a while and we got a lot of articles. All right, so. A little girl is adorned in a luxurious dress. She is a caretaker of the library in Roswell Manor. She loves pugs dearly and affectionately calls him by a nickname, Bubby. An extremely advanced dark magic user who can freely connect the library and the manor doors using light magic known as door closing. This ability prevents others from entering without Beatrice's permission, but only Subaru is somehow able to guess the interest on intuition alone. Graphics. Yeah, there's another attire. Right. A high noble in the kingdom of Lagunaga who holds the title of Margrave. He is an Amelia's caretaker and known for his eccentric due to his clown-like makeup and attire. It's hard to imagine his suspicious appearance and speech pattern, but he is the most powerful magic user in all of the, of the kingdom. The preside over all element, earth, water, fire, wind, light, and dark. He received the title of Red, Green, and Yellow from the Kingdom representing the highest rank of magic mastery for each re each represent um, representative element. As far as friends go, Roswell is close with the representative of the Royal Capital Merchant Guild, Russell Fer Fellow. He's also friends with the captain of the Knights um, of the Royal Guard, Marcos Gildark. All right. Alright, so, a blonde haired red eyed girl who lives as a thief in the slums. Despite her environment being not unlike that of a street urchin, she grew up strong and spirited thanks to Old Man Ram having raised her. She has grown in the slums since she was a baby and has been su supporting her liveliness through death. But is suddenly nominated as a royal candidate. Although she was chosen by the dragons, so though many have raised their discontent due to her background and the fact that she declared her key policy to abolish the social class system. Oh, I don't have the other dress. Alright, open round. An old giant that owns a loot house where the stolen goods are, are purchased and sold. Having grown up as a slave to corrupt aristocrats, Omei Ram harbored hatred for humans, but now loves Fel as his own granddaughter and treats her like family. He is renowned and well liked throughout the slums. As the owner of the Luhau, he has many connections in the slums of the royal capital and is relatively well known in the shopping district as well. This can be seen in the fact that he uh, at acquaintance with um, Katamon uh, merchants in the shopping district, though he has been somewhat alienated in the slums since the Luhau's was wiped out. Born in the Austrian family, which is bloodline of the Sword Saints, Reinhardt has a sincere and mild-mannered personality. He is the most powerful individual in the world as the Sword Saint of the current generation, but is a likable young man that doesn't let it get to his head, making him seem perfect and superhuman. Reinhardt is 
exceptional in the sense that uh, he is able to attain many divine protection. He can obtain them subconsciously as well as deliberately. He possesses a wide variety of divine protection from those that are useful in combat such as divine protection of arrow evasion to divine protection of salt reasoning, which enables him to never mistake salt with sugar. Oh, that's nice. Excuse me. The current head of the Crossell family and one of the royal selection candidate, a young woman of the character that is wise, quick witted, and capable enough to put in charge of her house. Despite her young age, she is widely considered to be the likely winner of the throne among the royal candidate. Cherche, um, Cruce possesses the divine protection of wind reading which enables her to sense one presence and mood as the one detects lies in others. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. She is also capable of unleashing sor her sword ability. One blow, a hundred fell by um, combining her wind magic and the divine protection of wind reading. Kirchner's main policy as a royal ca um, selection candidate is to abolish the co covenant with the divine dragon. She has her doubts about the way the kingdom plays such weight and reverence on the covenants with the dragon, which has caused quite a stir among the modern party. Alright, how many we got left? Oh, we got so much left. Alright. I'm going to try to just read these for today's episode. Crusade First Knight, who goes by Ferris. Ferris is a knight of the Royal Guard and old friend of Reinhardt and Julius. Despite her feminine attire and demeanor, he is actually male. His ears come from his demi human heritage. Ferris may lack skill with the sword, but he is gift so gifted with healing magic that he had been granted the title of Blue which is given only to the kingdom highest rank of water magic user. Ferris claims to be able to heal anyone as long as they aren't dead. Despite seeming to be aloof and overly friendly, Ferris is actually quite the realist. His views on life and death are, were shaped by the final moments of many people he has seen at, to as top class healing magic users. No, Ferris has no affinity for any offensive magic. I don't have his knight outfit. Oops. Um. Why is that his line? <laughs> Alright, um. An old swordman who served Cruchet, although he doesn't have any special um, divine protection, he gains the name of Sword Devil to how fiercely he fights on the battlefield with his mastery of the sword and well trained body. Despite his age, he is just as rel relentless with the blade. He has publicly defeated the previous sword, Saint Duresia. 40 years ago and proposed to her. This incident later became a famous song known as the Love Song of the Sword Devil and inspired the phrase the Sword Devil Marriage, which means anything can accomplish as long as one put in the effort.
All right. Priscilla. Wonder Royal Candidate, a dauntless beauty who often boasts that the entire world is this for her sake. Despite her arrogance, she is loved by her people as the Sun Princess due to her policies that have brought prosperity to her dem domain. Priscilla Moniker, within her domain, is as stated before, she is most com more commonly known as a Bloody Bride. The name comes from the fact that each of her husband has passed away and left their inheritance with her. She has already married eight times now. Alright, that's a cute little thing. Owl is Priscilla's servant with incredibly distinctive features such as um his arm is Oh wait, what the frick? I didn't even notice that. Like, this is not the first time I actually noticed that. I didn't even notice that in the anime. They don't even make a point of it in the anime really. I just thought, wow, I wonder if they hit that on purpose or if it's just something that I just naturally didn't notice. Um, going back, sometimes his missing arm, his bandit like appearance, multiple scars and burn, and a helmet covering his face. His helmet originates from the Valkyrian resident Lucinia. His dislike being called by his full name, Adebaron. And goes by Al and said his hobby includes drinking, taking naps, and he also like gambling. Though that necessarily doesn't mean he's good at it. All right. A royal candidate who came from the Kar Karagi Karagi um city state. She may seem rather laid back at glance. But she's a highly astute chairwoman who um, sees success with her natural business um, sense. It is that in a stage of love money necessarily, but it's, uh, it isn't that in a stage of love money necessarily, but value as it easy to understand metric to show the result of hard work. On that note, she is a big prominent on spending rather than simply accumulating. Oh wait, no. I mean, she's right. All right, Ricardo. Ricardo is a demon, he, uh, demi human who is an associated personal guard and the leader of the Beastman mercenary group, Iron Fang. He has known Anastasia for a long time and is one of, of the few people she trusts. He's a capable warrior, as one may be able to tell by his tall, muscular, and wild appearance, and he is the first one to rush um, onto the front line of the battlefield. He seemed intimidating at first glance, but he has a cheerful, lively, and earnest personality. Mimi may be a cute looking beastman of the Kenan tribe, but she is highly capable of du deputy captain of the Iron Fang. She can fight just as fiercely as Ricardo when it comes to down to it. She can also use healing magic despite proceeding over Earth mana. Oh, that's so little. Mimi's younger brother and a deputy um, captain of the Iron Fang. Since Ricardo and his, his older sister prefer to fight in the front line, he tends to command on the uh, 
of the other members of the Iron Fang at time. Perhaps due to his position, he has no problem issuing cool-headed orders when needed. He's also excessively attached to his sister. Trevi is a is Mimi a other younger brother and said to be the smartest of the three siblings. He wears a monocle. Um, Trevi is in a stage of right hand and is left in charge of finances and negotiation. According to Ricardo, Trevi is a backward compatible virgin of hetero. He is also accessible, um, accessibly attached to his sister. Actually. I did. A knight who support Anastasia. He is a friend with his fellow knight of the Royal Guard, Reinhardt, and Ferris. Subaru gets rather irritated by his pretentious um, demeanor, but he is known as the finest due to his being a hard worker who accomplished in both the literary and martial art. Julius is a learned spirit art user who is capable in both spiritual art and swordsmanship. Has the divine protection of gathering spirits and contracted with quasi spirits of all six elements. Excuse me. And I'm at the Transcended Dragon Church, which worshipped the Holy Dragon, and the sixth royal candidate of the Kingdom of Laguna, uh, Lagunaga. Polite and respectful and humble, those who encounter her tend to be stricken with desire to protect her. Mati and her knight Tiga joins the royal selection along with Sakura, who is sent by the church to look after them. She takes on any challenge with her utmost effort, but she can be a bit of an airhead and often makes careless blunders. Wait, there's more poses that I haven't unlocked? What the frick? Okay then. Melty Knight and a young man who gives off a somewhat flirtatious vibe. He often tells Melty about his feelings for her, but she doesn't take him seriously due to his casual demeanor. However, his heart truly is set on her alone and he is deeply in love with her. Claimed to be a knight and act the part, but he does not belong to the Knight of the Royal Guard. He's actually a guard for from the Transcended Dragon Church that Melty de designated to accompany her. This, um, perhaps due to his social, 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 whatever, standing and his relationship with Melty, he seems to be on the same wavelength as Subaru, making them get along quite well. So that does answer my question from earlier. So there's only one pose missing from him. Sent by the Transcended Dragon Church to act as Melty's civil servant, Sakura is tall, a tall woman with a model physique who looked good in a tight skirt. She yawns a lot and has a perpetual sleeping expression on her face. Sorry about that. She yawns... Oh, wait. Given the impression that she doesn't take things very seriously, her Lagion Lagion demeanor makes her seem like she lacks motivation, but she actually a cunning individual who gives us to counsel when act for her input. Due to her sharp intellect, she is taxed with handling the finances for her transcended um, dragon church. All right, three poses missing. How many do we have left? Uh, Salem. 
A serious and a human in Salem is a man of few words. However, he is a kind-hearted big brother type who will step forward to take on dangers instead of others. He is a vagabond on a journey with no destination and travel with his partner Puka. Salem is kind to everyone, but more so to young, those younger than him. He always tr um, tend to have sweets on hand to give to children. Because of his intimidating appearance and quiet nature, however, people sometimes react with suspicion sometimes. Okay, so Puka has all his poses. A spirit resembling a chipmunk, she is a vagabond traveling to various regions with Salem. She greatly admired Puck, who is a famous for um who is famous for being one degree um for spirit, and a fellow fire spirit. Unlike her silent companions, Salem Puka is a lot like a talkative young girl. She often frustrated by Salem unresponsive, but is quickly placated when he offers snacks each time. Okay, so she's missing three poses. A severe looking middle aged man with a well built body and blade wound on his face. Despite his appearance, Kataman looks um likes to take care of others and help Subaru and Simon need out of kindness. He owns a fruit stall, but his sales aren't great due to his intimidating face. The prettiest girl in Arms Village, uh, why didn't you just say cutest? She aspired to make clothing in the royal capital someday, but after being saved by Subaru in the, in the Mobby incident, she secretly dreamed of being to becoming Subaru's wife. Wow, I'm disappointed by this. I was hoping he has more. An unlucky young man who has the tendency to be drawn into trouble. He can never seem to catch a break when it comes to getting results. Whenever his frustration with his natural ill fortune builds up, he tends to seek escape in alcohol. However, Otto can't even get abbreviated due to his high tolerance, <laughs> further emphasizing his unfortunate nature. Alright. A white haired old man with a long beard. As a representative of the Council of Wise Men, which governed the Kingdom of Lagunaga in the absence of the king, Milk Lugtil position is that of the highest authority in the kingdom. He has a gentle looking man. He was a gentle looking man even in his youth, but even Wilhelm acknowledged that his gaze makes one feel the presence of carnage. One of the prominent figures of the Council of Wise Men, he may be aged now, but he was a fierce, um, a powerful and muscular man who was. Feared as a wild hound, he harbored a hatred for demi-humans due to his experience in, um, experience in the demi-human war. He, has one, he was once Wilhelm Superior. So he's racist. A healthy looking slouchy middle aged man with a prominent bag under his eyes and nervous personality. He has a prodigy son who now has a pierced tongue and goes about stealing from and burglaring others. Almost done. 
The commander of the Laguna Good Knights of the Royal Guard, his height is of three meter and powerful build, has earned him the moniker of Boulder. He speaks formally when on duty as knight, but tends to loosen up in more casual settings. Oops. Russell Fellow. A representative of the Royal Cap Capital Merchants Guild, he appears to be um, around 30 years old and has a dark blonde hair. He actually possesses a divine protection that allows him to determine whether a person or thing is of good or bad quality as long as it is within his realm of knowledge. Two more. A mysterious mass assassin who has it out for the royal candidate. A foul mouthed individual with an incredibly dry outlook and on life and on and death. It's unclear why he targeting the royal candidate and who he is supporting him. He carries several masks depicting various expressions at all time and switches them out to express whatever emotion he wishes to convey at the time. A piece of cloth covers his face so his face is never exposed when switching masks. Portuguese Ramoni Conti. A sin archbishop of the witch cult who presides over sloth. Portuguese worship the witch and envy with fantastical love and di diligently work to cause havoc in the various regions. Alright, and that was all of them. We got two new ones. Try to the end. Alright. But with that, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. I'm sorry we didn't progress the story, but I do hope that um, checking these bios did um, inform you guys of stuff.